Hello. Welcome to a new series called Under the Hood. I am Dr. Abstract, and uh, this one is a, a little bit different, where we're going to take a look at the Zim site at zimjs.com. Let's go there now. And this one is uh, looking at, at the code in Zim itself. So we've done a lot of series on YouTube. We've done the one that looks through, uh, it's called Zim Explore, that looks through how the Zim features are made. Then we've done a one on NFT specifically, so that one's uh, an exploration of interactive NFTs. We've done the Code in 5 Minutes series that's available on the Learn section as well as other series for, for learning. Here's uh, the Learn JavaScript with Creative Coding and the Zim Basics, for instance, and then the Code in 5 Minutes, so those are video series as well. There's the the beginning ones, which were, what was that called again? Node Zero and some of the tutorial uh, ones about JavaScript general, but those are going back in time and are old. Uh, what we haven't really done though, well, there there is a series on the docs. So if we go into the docs and look at the very bottom of uh, some of the docs, we're still working on this series. Whoa, I picked the wrong one to get to the bottom, didn't I? There's a tour series as well, and that takes you through e how to use each of the things in the docs. Not all of them have that, but uh, we're hoping, you know, we're building that as we go. What we haven't done, though, is taken a look at what uh, is actually in the Zim code. So I'd like to do that now. If you go to any of these, for instance, a rectangle, and go to the very bottom, there's code as well. So if we press code, this is the Zim code that makes a rectangle. It also extends a custom shape. A custom shape, or there is a Zim shape as well that can make any general shape. But our our shapes, uh, which are, are rectangle, circle, triangle, squiggle, blob, poly, line, and flare, I think, all extend a custom shape for things that they have in common. So. This is an exploration of how Zim is made, what goes into Zim, and I hope you enjoy. In, in this case, what we're going to do is take a look at a bug that we have. This is the text input right here. And if we say hello, it's all working fine. So I can select something there. Okay. We, this is a two-part. Uh, this is a two-part component where it has indeed typing and a, a cursor. And this is done by putting an HTML text field somewhere and matching the sort of the movements of our cursor here on the picture. If you recall, the canvas is all a picture. So we need to be able to handle text somehow. And for the longest time, we didn't do it this way. We overlaid a text area, an HTML text area on it and moved the text area around. Well, uh, then Kaojek, uh, if I've said his name correctly, uh, thought that he had a solution, and indeed it was a good solution, to mimic an HTML text field that's hidden, that's off, offline, and then this is a canvas one, which means we can scale this, it, it's, we can put, it has layers, so we can put things on the canvas above it and below it. We couldn't do that when we were overlaying an HTML tag on the canvas. So that's great. Anyway, he built uh, the one part, but uh, didn't go so far as to make it scrollable in a, in a like this. Uh, so we had to figure out how to do that at Zim. And also we have to bring it into the Zim fold, all of the things that Zim needs to make this a Zim component, such as styling. And therein lays the rub, actually, when we apply a style. So here's the code for that, new text input and center. When we apply a style, for instance, a corner of 10, that should make the, the, corner, the corners of this box have a corner of 10. Hey, great. But now watch what happens. What's, what's going on there? Oh, no. So what's happened is it is also styled the little rectangle that was being used for the cursor. So it looked like a rectangle rather than a line was being used. At the time, we might not even have a line. I think we did. And look at that. The selection rectangle is also 
applying a corner to probably a one pixel thing. It's applying a corner and um, scaling that corner and it, or scaling the whole thing to select. <laughs> it's all messing up. So basically what's happening is our general application of a corner is going into the component and uh, uh, styling something in the component that we didn't expect or that we didn't want to have styled. And what happened is, uh, like I said, Kojak um, coded this and didn't really realize that that might happen. We introduced styles later after a lot of components were made and then had to kind of scramble and go, oh my goodness, the styles are operating on things inside, like a button, it has a label and the styles operating on the label and we didn't expect it to, or maybe we did want it to. So we had to make a choice as to how styles would flow into the components. So today in this under the hood, we're going to go to the Zim docs and jump right on into line 25995, <laughs> nice, where we're making the blinker, which is a rectangle. And there it is. That's what it looks like. And here's the selection rectangle right here. And uh, these are open to have styles applied to them. A solution, if this come, if you come across this, uh, let us know so that we can adjust the, the component so that it styles probably better. But a solution would be to say, oh, okay, text input, text inputs, will have the following style, corner 10. So that's saying only style the text input with a corner of 10. Don't, and that won't style a rectangle inside the text input. So if we save that up here and refresh. Now, uh, oh, it didn't do a corner. I may have done something wrong. Text, I forgot the T. There we go. Text input, like so. And refresh here. Now it does the corners there. Excuse me. Have a meeting in 10 minutes. Isn't that nice? You, you know that it's only, <laughs> we're not going to go longer than 10 minutes. So there it is uh, doing the corner. Uh, and as I type in here, yay, it didn't style that. So, I mean, that's a solution, but please let us know rather than find the solution there. It should work um, nicely without having to specify specifically, <laughs> specifically specify the uh, text input there. So now we're back to broken. Let's go fix that. Well, let's confirm we're back to broken, first of all. all right. Refresh there, and yeah, we're back to broken. Broken! All right, we go into Zim, and let's fix this up. So the trick is there is a parameter of all of our display objects called style, and we can set that to false, and then it will not receive style. So that's handy for you to know as you're coding as well, and we'll jump directly to that parameter using the Zim Duo technique. Um, Zim Duo technique is something that we could explore one day on Under the Hood. It's something that we use all the time. And yeah, here comes my meeting. I'm teaching gaming and <laughs> getting at it here. All right, uh, so what have we got here? Uh, width. <laughs> wind. <laughs> yes, lots of wind. Width and height, and this one is color. Like that. <laughs> I am the owner of a channel. All right. With color or with height, color, and then style. So style is one of the last three things, and we'll turn that to false. So if we pop in and look at the docs here, here are some docs, and here are the parameters. There's width, height, and color, but then we'd have to go all the way over to style, group, and inherit. So they all have style, group, and inherit. I'll probably tell you more about these things later, but right now we're just using the style, which basically says, under parameters right here, style. Default true, set to false to ignore style, set with style, will receive original parameter defaults. So that's what we're doing there. We save that up and let's see if it works. We come in and refresh. Hey, nice cursor, huh? But we have not yet fixed the rectangle in behind here. So we need to go down and do the same to the rectangle. Do you remember what to do? Zim duo width is one, height is one, uh, color is select color and comma style 
it is false. If we wanted to, Zim Duo does uh, re recall. It gets into the rectangle, first line of the rectangle. It says, oh, 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 okay, wait a minute. I, I'm going to recall myself, and I'll put the parameters in the right order. So th that's magical. We'll show you that one day, like I said. But um, if we want to totally, totally optimize, if this were something that we're going over and over again, but nobody's making tons of text inputs. I mean, even if they made 20 text inputs, uh, we'd be fine. <laughs> we would, you know, we wouldn't notice any speed delay. But if you were making thousands of these things, I might have then gone in here and hard coded the uh, parameter order so it doesn't have to call twice. That would just mean counting a bunch of nulls. Okay, and there are definitely some places in Zim where we do that because we know, hey, this could be used over and over again uh, or lots of them all at once, and let's do that. Anyway, there's a style false on that, and I think we probably fixed it, and then I better prepare for my meeting, huh? So, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. and we do a selection. It's working. All right, so this has been an Under the Hood, and I am uh, Dr. Abstract. If you like this, then we'd um, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in a comment, and we'll we'll do some more of these. Cheers.